And we're live! Hello, and welcome to my channel. Vice Rhino here. Puck down there. Hi, I Puck. am I am still speechless that I'm I'm even here at all. This is such an honor. Thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, yeah, you uh, you suggested that we uh, we get together and dunk on some NFT bros, and uh, I I know enough about NFTs to know that they're a bad idea. <laughs> before we get into that, I do have to. Th so this stream is quasi sponsored, sort of kind of sponsored. Um, so Bart Ehrman and Mike Lycona are having a debate in April on uh, April 9th from 9.30 a.m. till 4.30 p.m. EST. So that's a long ass debate. Um, and it's on the resurrection of Jesus and whether or not it really happened. Um, it's tickets are $39.95. Uh, I, I believe it's an online, yeah, it's an online event and you get access to the live recording after it's done if you uh, pay it. And uh, yeah, so if you use my link in the description, is uh, it's vicerhino.com slash Bart, uh, then I get a little tiny kickback from that. And uh, yeah, that's a way to support the channel and watch a debate if that's uh, something that might interest you. So with that out of the way, hi, Puck. Wait, wait. Is there still seven hours to talk about regarding resurrection apologetics? Yeah, I, I well, you know what? It depends what they get into, because there is a lot of fascinating stuff. Like I, I they probably won't go in this direction, but I absolutely love Bart Ehrman's book, uh, Lost Christianities. So that's that's the one where he goes into the different sects of Christianity that existed in the first century and how we know they existed and the different things that they believed. And it's just, it's crazy. Like we we uh, we often talk about how uh, Christianity today is like, well, we we kind of know it's not true, because if there was an all powerful God that wanted to get his message across, he might do it in a way that would result in less than like 10,000 <laughs> denominations or however many there are. Uh, but the Christianity sects that existed back in the first century were so different from each other that they would make a Catholic and a uh, Southern Baptist look like the same denomination by comparison. It's like I guess that's something I never would have thought about. I got to check this book out. Yeah, well, there, there's uh, there's the Docetists who believe that Jesus and Christ were two separate beings, where Jesus was the human person who was inhabited by the Son of God, who was the Christ. And so when Jesus was being crucified, when he calls out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That was actually the Christ leaving Jesus and letting him get crucified. And um, th some of the accounts actually have uh, this Christ spirit after he left Jesus, uh, hanging out above Jesus and laughing at him on the cross. Like he, he laughed. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I'm definitely it's, behind it's, on my reading. Oh, my God. Uh, there's, uh, I haven't even gotten to the, uh, there's a sex cult version where they uh, communion involved bodily fluids. <laughs> so, okay, that yeah, sounds like a fun way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Yeah, I, I love that book. I doubt they're going to talk about any of that in this debate, but uh, Bart Ehrman does, he, he knows his shit. And uh, Mike Lacona is actually, um, he's he's who I, what I would call one of the better apologists. Um, I haven't seen anything like on the level of Frank Turek from him. Like blatant dishonesty. Yeah. <laughs> We're not talking about a, a, a Hoven situation. No, Mike Lycona is one of the ones that you can often use his, like you, you can use things that he has said to be like, okay, well, more reasonable apologists are saying things like this. And that completely disagrees with what you guys are saying. Gotcha, so. gotcha. Well, we had to we had to throw in some uh, some uh, counter apologetic content here somewhere because uh, this is a subject that has very little to do with uh, most of the content that we usually talk about. Yeah, so Puck, you're the uh, you're the expert between the two of us. Uh, you want to give a brief summary of what an NFT is? Oh my god! Okay, uh, <laughs> no, there's no brief, brief way to say it. Brief. But basically, and NFTs are being branded as a way to certify digital ownership, the same way that a, 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 a you can get a certificate of authenticity for like a painting or or something like if you buy a, a an original uh, Picasso or something. Um, NFTs are supposed to be the digital way of solving the problem of how to prove that you digitally own something. Yeah. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually do that, and hence yeah. is my problem with it, because people are being sold uh, through misinformation in a system that almost by definition benefits the people who started 
early to the detriment of people who came in late. And the only real way to make any profit off of this, so anything I've ever seen, uh, is by convincing another person to buy in for more expensive than you bought in for. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's why they're all so excited about promoting how awesome NFTs are, because they need people to be excited about it so they can sell the ones that they bought. Right. And if you ever engage in NFT discords, um, it's all just one big hype train. Um, the most popular channel on any of them is one where uh, other people or even bots are allowed to promote other uh, NFT mints and drops. Uh, the idea being that, you, OK, you've heard about something new, you're getting in at the ground level and then you hope that you got into one that someone else, uh, some whales who have thousands of dollars will buy into and the hype will cause the value of yours to go up. Yeah, well, value in air quotes there. Yeah. But um, yeah, so uh, anyway, let's let's go on a little journey through NFT land. Now, um, Puck, you collected most of the tweets for this evening and you'll, you'll be, uh, audience, you'll be able to tell which ones are from me <laughs> and which ones are from Puck because... Uh, one of us uses the objectively superior dark mode. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I knew I was going to get in for that one. Yes. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm old. What people don't realize is that I'm old, okay? I, I didn't know about dark mode when, when I first uh, used the internet. Yeah, we anyway. Were, we were just talking beforehand about uh, how <laughs> Lord of the Rings is 20 years old now. So shout out to Richard Taylor in the chat, who is not the Richard Taylor who did the special effects for Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I don't understand how that can be. Can you believe it's been 15 years since the Wii? I still have I, a Wii. I'm, I'm blown away at how fast things go. Anyway, um, <laughs> back to, to the original point that we're here for. Uh, here we go. So when you're going to talk to a lot of people in, in, in crypto space, you're going to run into a lot of these uh, abbreviations. We don't have time, obviously, to go into what everything here means. <laughs> but this is an example of one of these tweets where that, that kind of shows some of their mentality. So DAO. Uh, for those who don't know, stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization, which some people are trying to brand as the way businesses are going to be run and corporate structures are going to be run in the future. Um, we WAGMI, which is um, if you ever just want to, you know how you can like search for um, Jesus is risen or whatever, a hashtag, and you can find a whole bunch of uh, tweets for your usual content. If you search for WAGMI, yeah. it stands for we're all going to make it which is the rallying cry for people who like to buy into NFTs and cryptos early as investments. So it basically it's meaning we're all going to be really, really rich and we're all going to be fabulously wealthy. Uh, and uh, was it, they, they use an old one called to the moon. Yeah. Which yeah, I, I'm familiar a, with to the moon. Yeah. And so that this, that's basically what's in D Y O R of course. Do your own research. Own I know that one. I know that one. <laughs> yeah. So this is how they think they think in terms of the future. And just like uh, just like prophecies, you know, people, uh, uh, a theist who like to give out prophecies, they usually give them far enough out so that you don't look back and call them out on it later and say, hey, you remember when you said the world was ending back in 1977? Well, that turned out not to be true. So here we have Sasha. 2012 uh, is... was 10 years ago, by the way, as long as we're talking about how old we are. Oh, no. You remember <laughs> when the world ended 10 years ago? That's right. Good old Mayans. Um <laughs> No, but, but this is what they do. So now they're going to say, hey, the year is 2036. The USA is, uh, which is now a DAO, is a crypto superpower. Uh, and all these other fantastical claims. And of course, you know, 25 years from now, we're not going to remember this. And we're not going to remember how bad this is. But they want to be seen as intelligent and forward thinking. And you better start listening to now because this is, this is uh, where the money is still okay. good. Nation yeah. states are now blockchain states. How would that even work? Like your your okay. country is verified by the blockchain? Like, isn't and this is one of the biggest problems I have with blockchain. Like blockchain is fascinating technology. There's fascinating math behind it and, and the computer science is interesting. But it, it's promised to do things that we're not even sure it's ever gonna be capable of doing. Kind of like uh, VR machines back in the nineties well, when they were like heavily pixelated and, and really, really few polygons. And we were told like by this time, um, we're basically living in virtual space, right? Well, clearly we're not, but this is again, how they're thinking. Of course, blockchain in its current, uh, incarnation is not capable of doing I, that i blockchain just want holds to know a very small amount of memory i just want to know what a nation state as a blockchain state would even mean like what would that even look like <laughs> I, I i suppose the best thing i can think of is that um legislation and uh changes done to legislation uh any transactions done with the government taxes um property anything like that is uh, uh held on blockchain which again in its current iteration i i hope not 
<laughs> well, but I that's mean, the given, best thing given, I can think of. Like, I know, both of us have seen the the uh, the line goes up video, which um, yeah. if you guys haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. it goes it's like an hour long video goes into all the problems with nfts specifically but like blockchain stuff in general um like bitcoin whatever but one of the problems with it is that part of the, like one of the things that's inherent in the blockchain is that everybody has a copy of all the transactions so if you know somebody's wallet identification number or whatever so like the thing what like people that take bitcoin as donations or whatever they'll put their wallet num their wallet id in their video descriptions if you have that, you can track every single one of their transactions because it's a public document. So right. now nation states are now blockchain states. So that that brings up issues like uh, voter records. Like there's a reason those are anonymous. <laughs> yeah. And, and anything like medical records yeah. they, they want to put on blockchain, which I find to be highly problematic. And like, you know, these are people who they 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 will at the same time flaunt how awesome blockchain is because it's so transparent while at the same time trying to say how private it is and how anonymous it is and i don't understand how those two can work at the same time i don't think that they understand how it con they are contradictory well i think they, they understand that if i don't give my wallet number to anybody then nobody can figure out which of these wallets is me without putting in a lot of work or whatever it'd be really hard to do yeah. um but the problem is that once you have the wallet number you have everything yeah. And, and then the issue comes when you have to try to do something in real life. Like if your if your uh, uh, property deed, for example, is on blockchain and you have to do something like go to court to prove it in person. Well, guess what? Now that wallet and you are associated on public record. So do, there that goes. So do you remember a couple of years ago when Steam was taking Bitcoin as payment? I, I probably wasn't too into it at that time. Well, well, well how did that go? Um, well, they stopped taking Bitcoin as payment. And just recently, they uh, they released a thing explaining why they made that decision. And the reason they made that decision is because 50% of all those transactions were fraudulent. Oh, no. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the extra security of the blockchain. I, I Okay, and, and crypto right now is so volatile that there are tremendous swings just day to day. And like, if I was a business owner, if I if I ran a, a shop selling video games and I sold one for for forty bucks, I, I have a pretty good idea that forty dollars will be roughly the same this morning as it is in the afternoon. Like, I can buy roughly the same things with it. Blockchain currency, on the other hand, and some are more volatile than others. The swings are tremendous. In the past month, Ethereum and Bitcoin, the two most popular uh, cryptocurrencies, have gone down about twenty percent. That's a huge swing. And and I don't understand how it can be branded as a viable currency and be that volatile. So I'm missing something. Well, um, actually, since yesterday, Bitcoin is up another two thousand dollars. So it's uh, it's, it's only it's only down 10 percent for the month. I wonder if that's because of the uh, executive order. Like people are starting to hype up. It's like, hey, you know, this is starting to be. I have no idea what's on the executive order. I just saw that there's supposed to be one like tomorrow or something. Yeah, but hype makes. Yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't have to actually be like, look at look at Elon tweeting things about Doge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's the thing. Uh, while we're on the talking about it, um, because uh, NFTs and blockchain is kind of like the Wild West, the kind of things that would be illegal, like price fixing and collusion, perfectly legal in NFT space. Well, it's so not that they're some... legal. It's that they're not illegal yet. <laughs> yeah, so what you'll do is you have people who mint, you know, their 9,999 NFTs, and then they will convince some whale to buy a bunch of them so it looks like they're really hot and popular. Or they just will... trade them with themselves. Right. And that's that's what they do. Remember, they did this with uh, retro video games a, a while back. They just traded back and forth and jacked up the price. And you can do that with NFTs, and it makes them look huge. And then, hey, rug pull. All right. Anyway, next anyway, next yes. one is Crochem says this medium article is the reason why I'm all in and so bullish on the team and Mad Meerkat NFT project. Mad Meerkat okay. MM is not just another project, it's love and madness exemplified through community as well as through execution by the team. Please have a read below. Hashtag wag me. <laughs> and the reason I posted this is because I, I wanted your viewers to be able to look at an article for themselves. And when they look at this, you will see that there's no actual meaningful information on that article at all. 
uh, it's it's basically just again just talking about the hype and you notice it's not even talking about the project it's talking about the, the the strength of the team and how everybody is dedicated to it it's not talking about what the project actually does it's not talking about how they plan to execute it uh who's on it uh the way you can uh you know you look at someone's linkedin and see what previous ex experience they have they talk about none of this and yet somehow they're considering this to be their source of information for why you should highly value mad meerkats yeah i just i i went there it's it's not even Oh, it's one of those things. It's like a blog, basically. Yeah, yeah, it is. And there, there's no good, meaningful information. And I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna uh, throw a link to that in the chat so that people can. Yeah, and you can. Uh, I think we have it on another slide somewhere, um, where there's a, a, a couple of screenshots from the actual project, the the Wagmi game, uh, which is a great uh, segue into talking about how NFTs entered gaming space. So, is that the next one? Um, I, I believe so, I, but uh, Trez? it might not be. Uh, ba, 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 ba. says, wow, freaking mad long reading, but well said in the article. Those yeah, who are long enough into the project, they do believe in what the team is doing, and those who just joined is definitely FOMO. What's FOMO? Mm -hmm. FOMO, fear of missing out. In other ah. words, you didn't get in on it early enough, uh, and, and now these are the people who are saying, uh, the, you know, the, the reason you should get into it is because you might uh, uh, lose out on a perfect so, buying opportunity. So wait, you have to get into it lest you get into it too late. But these people right. need people to get into it late so that they can actually make money off of it. Right. See, this is what the insular community does. The insular community it tries to pitch projects early to each other so that by the time the projects get out to the mainstream, uh, we already have our group of, of people who are going to uh, be the primary beneficiaries of it. They call these the whitelist people. Right. So that, that's the whole point of getting uh, it, the, the point is they're playing the long game. Right. The point is not to get big hits with your first couple of crypto projects, but to eventually get hits with your crypto projects. You're the, you're the first early ones are just to gather up the community and get people to like you and trust you. And again, you can see with this tweet, they're not even talking about the project itself. They're they're, they're talking about nothing that that Mad Meerkat actually is just talking about the people. Well, it's Mad Meerkat is a bunch of computerly computer generated Meerkat pictures along the same lines as the Bored Apes. Yes, That's... and there's there's a fascinating reason, and they go over this on uh, uh, John St Josh Strife Hayes's channel as to why all NFT art looks like crap. We're just name dropping all sorts of channels today, but that's good because these are probably channels that don't get hey, talked about on. I should name drop people. myself. Hey, you, you know, super chats are a thing. <laughs> I, I actually have a bot rotating through different uh, different things saying, hey, send me money so I can buy NFTs. My kids need to eat <laughs> NFTs for dinner. Oh, I promise I won't actually buy NFTs if you give me money. That's just a joke. Be, oh, I would never but buy an NFT. No, but I this actually, is it. This is the mentality. They're not talking about what NFTs actually are. They're talking about the hype and the people in the communities. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is one that I selected. It's not got anything to do with NFTs, but we have to like get this is my bread and butter right here, this sort of thing. This is from Capturing Christianity. Cameron, the apologist with the good hair and good lighting and not much else. <laughs> um I'm actually kind of jealous of his hair. I, I don't put effort into mine. <laughs> and still, you look better than I do. So some, something, <laughs> I, I took a left turn there somewhere. Um, there we go. I have a decent barber. <laughs> decent. Yeah, I mean, the town I live in, I don't really have much choice. Uh, anyway, he says, some people think, oh, materialism has to be true. Just look at how well physical science has done. It's explained so much. Surely it's going to explain consciousness. The irony is it's done so uh, it's done so well be, uh, precisely because it was designed to exclude consciousness. And that's a quote from Philip Goff, uh, Philip Goff, who um, out of context, this looks like Cameron using this to like promote the idea that his religion is true. Um, but the problem is, if you look at Philip Goth, like I, I just I clicked on the name quickly. He's uh, he's actually an agnostic philosopher. Uh, typically, in philosophy circles, if someone says that they are an agnostic, then um, that generally would be what most of us would refer to in layman's terms as an atheist. Right, right. 
I, I don't know where I stand on this. I mean, I hear a lot so. of people talking about this, but uh, like, like to me, consciousness is just what we use to describe the fact that we have a whole bunch of inputs coming in and we have a whole bunch of different ways to process it and give outputs. And it seems co so complicated that we're able to, uh, you know, it, it seems like we have some choice in the matter. I'm not necessarily convinced that we do, but I need to look into this more. So I don't know where I fall on this, honestly. Well, the way I look at like, I think this quote is like, there. I think there's probably more context here that we're missing. But um, but I I think probably like like Cameron wants you to think that like it, it looks like he's saying that we use materialism when we're investigating the natural world, but we can't use materialism when investigating consciousness. I disagree with that position, um, but it like the the that last bit at the end the irony is it's done so well precisely because it was designed to exclude consciousness. It doesn't exclude ex material explanations for consciousness. The like I think it's referring to the fact that science is designed to minimize our cognitive biases. So it's like it, sure. it takes takes the person out of the work. And, right, and like, not assume things like the soul or what is it called substance dualism or yeah. I'm I'm so far behind on this. Yeah, no, this is this is kind of a Shannon Q thing. I saw her in the chat earlier, but I think she might have just like popped in to say hi and then left. I I, I, I spent all my research time on this looking up zero knowledge proofs, so I'm sorry that I didn't get to this. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, like I said, the math behind crypto and blockchain is fascinating. Um, and most people don't, you know, I, I get it. You know, people just see blockchain uh, on a tweet or something and think, ooh, this is really awesome and this is wonderful without actually knowing what it is. But that's okay. All right. So uh, Naram Deputz sent a dollar and said, as a good skeptic, oh. I must confirm the existence of the stream donations. <laughs> Thank you. That's um, awesome. And then where was it? Demon Fairy Cute sent a dollar without a message. So oh. thank you, Demon Fairy Cute. Next up, we have Charles C. Eth, who's this. Aw. I, I, I did this just to be a dick. Yeah. Um, he says, seeing your old NFT as someone else's PFP feels like seeing an X with another dude. And <laughs> then I, I went and I right clicked his. Uh, his profile picture and download it. Because that's what we do with NFTs, isn't it? Okay, yeah. so for those who don't get it, uh, PFP stands for profile picture. And the whole point of NFTs is supposed to be that when you buy an NFT, you own the original for the art. And now comes an interesting philosophical discussion as to actually what it means to own something. Because even though you own an NFT, you don't have any of the the, the rights that you would associate no. with copyright. Like you cannot cause someone to cease and desist using it even for profit. Um, you can't show ownership of it in court. Um, you can't insure it. Uh, you can't uh, use it for, uh, you, for your own commercial purposes. The rights, as we would think of ownership rights, still belongs to whoever made it in the first place. Um, what you're well, really is, buying with it is yeah. possible for the person who made the thing to transfer those rights over as part of the NFT, but it has to be like explicitly laid out as part right. of the deal. Right. And, and, and I'm willing to bet that most people don't read that fine print. The, everybody that we're talking to here, like Charles C. F, which that's the tag that people usually use to show that they're huge on uh, uh, the uh, Ethereum blockchain. Yeah. Um, these people know that. But they're counting on people who don't know that to eventually buy into it. Well, the the best part about the the Very whole tasty. the whole right clicking thing mm -hmm. is that like you know they they some some of them know that it's like whatever it doesn't matter. But there are others that get legitimately upset when they see people right clicking and saving their things. Which I don't know why anyone would want to save this thing. It's ugly as fuck. <laughs> yeah. But the thing <laughs> is, to view it on the internet, your computer has to download it. Right. So whether you right click it or not, that file gets saved locally on your computer. That ah. that has to happen no matter now, what. Now, but now we get to talk about the fungibility part of it, which is the whole point of having it be NF in the first place. You might have a downloaded copy, but they have the original. No, they have a they have <laughs> a link that says this is the original. And I was it was it OpenSea that had like eighty percent of their things were illegitimate or like yeah. copies of something else or whatever. And Divin Art had to uh uh have a special uh 
of the system on there to, oh, to, to uh, just to complain that someone stole their. Did art. you see the uh, the guy that does the honest commercials thing? Um, like if the lottery were honest and if tuition college tuition was honest and all that sort. Of, um, he did if NFTs were honest. No, I haven't seen that one yet. You should watch that. It's pretty funny. Oh. And he he ends it. He follows it up with like he he creates like fake NFTs, <laughs> and like he he's just like joking about how like oh well a bot is probably scraping these right now and selling them on some <laughs> nft market and then a, like a day after that video was published he published a short saying like yeah you know those fake nfts i made yeah here they are after being scraped they are now on this open sea or whatever <laughs> it's just it's so predictable yeah. Um, Godless Blessing says, an educated man knows the extent of his education. A wise man knows the extent of his ignorance. That's a Aww. quote from Stuart Firestein, The Pursuit of Ignorance. Or, I assume that's a book, The Pursuit of Ignorance. That is awesome. You you get super chats like crazy. I, I can do like weeks of Twitch streams at a time and not get any bits. You're awesome. Mm. And congratulations on your fundraiser also last week. That, yeah, that went pretty uh, well too. Final number, including the 500 that came in through the person that had issues with the website, was uh, 2,700 raised for uh, Sweet. Doctors Without Borders. So it's pretty awesome. I've got a pretty nice community here. You guys rock. <laughs> Next up is Dank Cold Turkey, who says, This one, I'm, I'm almost certain this one's a bot. Because this, this seems uh -huh. like one of those ones, that, like, it's just trying to get people hyped up and excited for, like, holding on to them and not selling them for ridiculous sums of money. But then getting other people thinking, like, oh, well, if people are willing to sell them for, or people are wanting to buy them for 452000 then maybe this one that's 10000 I could flip that pretty quick or whatever. Um, he says, just turned down a $452,000 offer on one of my board ape yacht club apes. I did it on the couch in my 750 square foot apartment next to my wife and dog that cost 2,000 a month while watching The Bachelor drinking a $10 bottle of red wine. Just know if you're reading this, you're not too late. Now, there, oh, there's a lot going on here. I assume <laughs> that he's supposed to be bragging about his awesome lifestyle and how like he lives in an expensive apartment that's spacious or whatever. Um, so I assume this is supposed to be like in a city somewhere where 750 square feet is like luxurious. Yeah. And I don't understand how it's a flex that like what kind of dog costs 22 K or 2.2 K a month. I think it's that between his apartment, his wife and his dog. No, no, no. I, I know. I'm just saying grammar is important. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> just Fair enough. And, and also but, $10. I don't know much about wine, but that seems like a not very great bottle of wine. Yeah. That's where I was going to go with that because okay. my... My favorite bottle of wine is the Prisoner. Uh, I believe they're bottled in Washington, might be California. I don't know. This is one of those things that I knew when I was a server, but I don't care now. I just know it's yummy. Um, but uh, like it, getting it wholesale, it's like 50 bucks a bottle. And at the restaurant, we were selling it for like 170, I think was the number we ended up on. And that was a mid-range bottle of wine. Like there are fancier ones that, I just don't like as much that I never would have even tried because it's like $300 a bottle. Um, there's no way I would have tried that if I wasn't working in a restaurant where they expected me to know the wine. And the best way to know the wine is to try the wine. I am so not a wine person. I, I, I don't understand the, the concept, but uh, yeah, $10 it's seems 90%, yeah, weird. 90% of wine tasting stuff is pure bullshit. <laughs> Like, seriously, that's, oh. that's one of the things that they train you in when you're training to be a sommelier is that people people's experiences are subjective. So if you're not sure what a particular wine tastes like, just tell them it tastes like something and then they will taste that in it. And then <laughs> like, do I like, detect a hint of oak in this? Yeah, and they're, 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 yeah well, there, there are patterns that you can go to, like um, like certain wines you, you're <laughs> Uh, like a, like a Merlot, you're probably going to want to stick to like berries and dark fruit and stuff like that, because mer most Merlots will give something like that off. Um, you can add you can add vanilla and spice to spice it up. Um, actually, probably one of my favorite wine descriptions was there was a Sauvignon Blanc that was um, it was uh, it was prepared in a um, in a concrete uh, wine cask. Thing, or what's it called? Like there's barrel age, there's steel tanks, and they, they did this in a concrete thing that it was called the egg. And the concrete lent certain characteristics to the wine. And the winemaker described it as um, 
it tastes like you're licking a rock, but in a good way. <laughs> and it's it's funny because like as soon as he said that, I was like, yeah, I can I can get that, but it, like that's it's it's all subjective. It's all BS. Uh, just drink what drink what tastes good to you. Don't let someone sell you on it and say like, oh, this, you know, you have to get this wine. You like, you have to pair the Pinot Noir with the duck. It's like, yeah, that's a classic pairing and it'll go well together. But if you, you know, if you like a white wine, you're going to like it with the duck. It might not be the most amazing combination ever, but okay, whatever. We're off topic. No, no, no. While, while we're, you know, while, while we're plugging other shows and podcasts, the Super Freakonomics, uh, the book Super Freakonomics talks about an experiment that someone did on their wine tasting club at Harvard. Um, and it went about as well as you would have expected that uh, the people who claim to be very knowledgeable about their wines did not rate the more expensive wines as yeah. any higher quality than the cheap stuff. Oh, there! So. If if you if you blind the taste tests, they can't mm -hmm. even tell the difference between red and white. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh man. Okay, so back back to this guy. I think I think what he's trying to say is, look, I have this meager lifestyle, um, but I know that the value of board my board ape is still going to go up. So even at enough money to pay my rent for fifteen years, more a little more than that, but that's just the fast math in my head. It's still it's still not worth it because I know it's going to increase in value some more. So okay, keep, so is he is he going for the downplaying it? Where like, look at how bad my life is, but I'm keeping it that way on purpose because I'm we're gonna that's go to the, the moon. Best I can, yeah, that's the best I've got here. Because yeah, is it like depending on where you are, that's an amazing lifestyle. Yeah, it's like 750 I mean, square feet in New York City. That's fantastic, and you can reliably get the same night off work to watch The Bachelor. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll. I miss watching Survivor. I used to have a job that supported that, but I don't anymore. So, I haven't watched Survivor since season one. Wow, good old Richard Hatch. I don't even know that name. I assume that's the guy that hosted it. No, he's the one that won season one. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. No, it's, I still, it's still Jeff it. Probst. I think. I, I believe. I'd have to look. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But anyway, yeah, I think I've... that's what the flex is. The flex is trying to say, look, there's still time. It, NFTs are not completely yeah. dead. Even if you buy in now. Look at me. I'm still holding on to mine, so you still have a chance of legitimate yeah, profit. So I yourself. think I said this when I first brought it up, but I, I'm I think this is a bot that's just trying to hype it up. But yeah, we we uh, we actually I think we were off air when we discussed it and we compared NFTs to Ponzi schemes and MLMs. Yes. So it's like it's not a Ponzi scheme because you do technically get something for it, but at least an MLM you get something useful, or at least like <laughs> a, like maybe not really useful, but like. You can, there are some MLMs that sell things that you will use, whether they're worth it or like, the, yeah, they're usually overpriced and shit, but it's like, yeah. and this, I this mean, is the same thing. Like, I don't know if you know, I was, I actually was in an MLM for several years, um, ages and ages ago, but uh, this reminds me of that. Like if, if that's the angle we're going for, where he's saying, look how poor I'm acting when I could have hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, yeah, that's that's very much a, like there was very much a uh, 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 what's it called a uh, culture of like, look at these sacrifices that I'm making for the sake of what I could have in the future. Right, right, right. And that's all that, that, that you'll you'll find that everywhere in, in NFT culture. It's talking about the future. But I, I guess where I've always come from is if you want to be somewhere different five years from now, it takes meaningful action and changes now. Right. So show me what is happening now to get it to where you say it's going to be in the future. And so far, I've got nothing. A couple of uh, what is actually it's been almost a month ago. Um, I was mouthing off on a, a different YouTube show talking about uh, uh, NFTs. And I said that somebody pointed out this uh, that, that you can buy music royalties with NFTs. And I did the math later and it turned out that to break even on your investment on just just to break even. Uh, the song would have to be listened to 3.6 million a billion, sorry, 3.6 billion times to make wow. uh, enough money to just pay off what you spent on the NFT. Yeah, no. So it's like, why are we doing this? Okay. All right. After this, this was this was the bot thingy that I was the most proud of. It says, for every NFT you help me buy, I will give fifty dollars of my own money to the liquor store. What a worthy Aww. cause. <laughs> so if somebody sends me four hundred and fifty-two thousand dollars right now. I'll buy a bottle of whiskey. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the other thing. Like, you know these, what? These... If you give me that much money, I'll buy a fucking nice bottle of whiskey, too. <laughs> <laughs> 
this is actually part of the scheme because the more you have to transfer your currency from one to another, the more you kind of lose track of how much value it really is. Like yeah. uh, one thing that you posted about, which um, thank you uh, on behalf of Americans, is that in Canada, you buy gas by the liter. Mm -hmm. And here in America, we buy by the gallon. So when you post your price per liter, it looks somewhat decent until you realize, no, you have to multiply that by like 3.8 or something to get the price that we see on ours. So uh, the more you transfer it, like, like how, how much do people really know about Ethereum to know what 0.01 Ethereum is? is the actual cash value. Yeah, of. well, they, they always have to have it listed. Like it, right. it's supposed to replace fiat currency, but you don't know what it even means without the fiat, fiat currency to compare it to. Yeah. And you'll you, see this you kind of predatory stable. system in uh, pay to win video games. Um, yeah. Like, you know, like a Candy Crush even has this where if you buy a certain amount, it transfers your cash currency into shells or, or stars or whatever their currency is for that game. Now you're locked into that game and your currency is only good in that game. And so it's harder to say, okay, I am buying $5 worth of something in this game because, um, because of the, the, uh, what is it that you're, you're, you're thinking in terms of another currency. Yeah. So when you're thinking about another currency, which is why they never allow this for cash, you always have to buy crypto first. Um, they can, they can uh, obfuscate the actual price that you're paying for it. And the more you have to transfer, of course, the more it costs because of, uh, transfer fees and, and get, you know, they call it gas fees, but I didn't want to use that term. I, um, I have, I have a friend who, um, he tried to get me into Bitcoin years ago and, um, he accidentally transferred me 20 Bitcoin when he meant to do 0. 0.2. Uh huh. <laughs> and, and just uh, because you're a kind person, you gave a good chunk of it back, right? No, I gave it all back because I am, oh. but yeah, no, I, well, I, I had, he, but like I, I remember the fear in him thinking that he had just lost and I think it was, I think this was back when Bitcoin was around a thousand dollars a coin so it was like he he, he was thinking he just lost like twenty thousand dollars or no it, it, well whatever I'm misremembering the numbers it might have been twenty thousand dollars of Bitcoin but the actual Bitcoin value was lower I don't remember because who fucking knows this changes all the time <laughs> but um, yeah like I just remember the terror that he was feeling is like if you do that with real money you accidentally send someone the wrong amount of money you can call your bank and be like hey i'd like to put a stop payment on this hey that was a that transaction was in error uh, and this guy's not giving me my money back so i i need my money back and but the banks have the blockchain. ways to do that but <laughs> since that was on the blockchain no it's permanent you can't reverse transactions on the blockchain mm -mm. um and that's one of the biggest issues I have with blockchain is because um, in theory, yes, it is more resistant to middleman hacking. Once information is stored in a, in a blockchain, there's no going back yeah. and fixing it. Yeah, but, but if it you get the wrong information stored, errors. you get the wrong information stored in the blockchain, you can't fix it because now it, because it's decentralized, right. it's everywhere. You have to fix it everywhere. You can't do that. Right. Um, Dr. C. F. is next. Dr. C. F. or ETH or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, says, is it just me or is subscribing to Twitter blue just to get the hex PFP totally lame and anti web three example, Twitter can slash probably will ban me for this comment. I found this funny for a couple of reasons. <laughs> First is that like, yeah, no, I, I feel like Twitter making you pay for Twitter blue to get the hexagon profile picture thing. I feel like that's them keying in on like these guys are the kind of people who will pay lots of money just to have a JPEG. So mm -hmm. let's make them pay a little bit of money to have their JPEG look special. Yeah, let's and cash in on it yeah, too, just, right? They're just cashing in on it. Um, and then the uh, Twitter can slash probably will ban me for this comment. This comment was posted on January 26th, and it's still up. It's still here. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and Web3 is, is the other one of the other big things that they're pitching along with DAOs, which... Maybe there's time to talk about DAOs, but there's, a, and I apologize because we're talking about a lot of terminology and throwing out a lot of things. And it sounds like, like moving the oh. goalposts ish. The, the problem is that, that this kind of technology and the way it's being pitched to commoners is, sorry, <laughs> <To> um, <laughs> is, is that there's so many problems with it that it's not even moving the goalposts. They haven't even gotten a first down yet. So you know, it's problem after problem after problem. And this is one of them because once again, they're talking about uh, web three, which is basically their little code for what the internet is. They think the internet is going to be shaped like in its next incarnation. Well, I think, cause so. I think, 
I might have this wrong. I think that actually is a legit, like maybe not web three, but like uh, web 1.0 is like those basic HTML websites that like the GeoCities look uh, like you, you think of a website from the nineties, you're thinking web 1.0 and we are in like web 2.0 now where it, like things are more streamlined. You can mm -hmm. you, like CSS is how you design things. So they, like depending on what your monitor resolution is, it resizes everything dynamically and everything. Um, so I, so I think like that, Far is legit. I'm not even sure what they mean by Web 3.0. Like, um, yeah, it, it, the 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 whole thing that like we haven't even found this. Like, I don't think we have any tweets that say this, but a lot of their philosophy and and underlying ideology comes from the metaverse. The idea that uh, what we live in now is a corrupted kind of world. So they want to try to pitch the idea of this digital utopia. Uh, where all digital transactions can be trusted even amongst parties that don't trust each other. Um, and if you're thinking things like, you know, a, an environment like Ready Player One, you're thinking along the lines that they're thinking. They This is the world that they want to have, where ownership of digital space is just as meaningful as ownership of actual real estate. So I didn't bring anything up about Earth 2, but Earth 2, have you heard about Earth 2? Have you seen this? Um, it's, I, I know biosphere 2 was like a really bad failed experiment by hippies in the 70s <laughs> no this is this is dumber and worse <laughs> basically earth 2 is somebody took all of google maps for the entire planet oh yes and yes i know they this. made everything yes. like little tiny grid squares yes and you can buy a grid square yeah so you can, you can then... buy the taj mahal Right. But then there it's, are different companies setting up their own versions of it. So you you don't know who owns the actual digital Taj Mahal because you can have multiple different people owning the same grid in different in yes, different metaverses. It's so right. stupid. Oh, it's so fucking stupid. It, it is. And and but but people that, that doesn't change the fact that people are buying it. And, you know, if you look at the Earth 2 site, you're going to see a lot of things we were talking about earlier, how it's all about the hype and talking about what we can potentially do with this in the future. Like right now. Yes, so, I get it. It's just buying grid squares. But eventually you're going to be able to yeah. get resources from your grids and use it to build buildings on your grid. And eventually you're going to be able to interact with all these spaces in in 3D or virtual. Reality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Naram Deputz <laughs> is uh, saying He's asked a question that I I, um, I don't think we've addressed this yet, but the, uh, okay. they say uh, Earth 2 isn't even actually NFTs. It's just some database, right? Um, yeah, So that, this, that's correct. This, Earth 2 does, however, force you to buy into its own cryptocurrency before you can exchange on it. Yeah. But isn't that kind of like the same thing as NFTs where you're not actually you're not buying the actual thing? You're just buying buying the link to the thing. Yeah, it's it's NFT esque without actually being a non fungible token I, in the technical sense. And I I also I don't think we got into the fact that um, like an NFT doesn't have to be a picture. It could be a, mm. something like a computer program, and if you know someone's wallet ID, you can you can give them things and they can't turn them down because once it goes through the blockchain, it's permanent. Right. So you could write a computer code that could install a virus or could like do something to invalidate whatever nfts they have in their wallet or would like automatically transfer them to someone else or something like that and you could deposit it into their wallet and then they see a new thing they click on it and they, uh, oops now they've just lost all their stuff and that that happens um if you yeah. follow the uh, twitter account crypto bros posting their l's or something um they you'll often see people that have like all their nfts got stolen through this method but the weird thing, and this blows me away, is that they don't talk about it like it's something negative with the system and saying we need to make serious changes to the infrastructure before this can be taken seriously. They think of it as like a rite of passage, right? Where they invested in a, a, an NFT drop early, it turned out to be nothing and they wasted tens of thousands of dollars or how much ever, and then they brag about it, right? They say, look, I had my very first rug pull. I'm, I'm one of the grownups now or something and and the and you know that's how they treat future people that, that get their first rug. it's like oh if you haven't had a rug pull you're not even playing the game yeah. um <laughs> and, and when you're talking about like dropping a program into someone's wallet that's you know that's really deep into it it could be as simple as that link that you have now goes to something other than what you originally bought for yeah right like you and, and this is perfect because some people they buy what they think is digital art and then they check their link and it actually goes to get this a jpeg of a, or a gif of a rug being pulled <laughs> that's ridiculous 
Um, okay. Godless <laughs> Blessings sent $2, said, uh, org pictures from book Little Black Sambo worth money? I assume, as the original pictures? I don't know. I'm, I'm not, not sure familiar what with Little that Black book. Sambo is. Neither am I. Okay. Uh, drop Cade Bake number. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's their board ape number. Mm. Um, there are a few celebrities that are starting to figure out how Web3 social media works. They follow people back. Having 200,000 followers and following zero is such a Web2 flex. At mm. John Cena, at Paris Hilton, and at Crystal Hefner are, uh, are doing it right. Who am I missing? Hashtag Web3, hashtag NFT. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, I... This, this is unrelated to NFTs. I don't understand the whole follow back thing. Like, okay. I think I know what it means in NFT space. But no, I, I know like, what it means. Okay. I just okay. don't get why, like, I mean, I, like if I followed everybody back that follows me on Twitter, I, I forget how many followers I is something like 14,000 right now. Oh, um, rub it in. Go ahead. Yeah, whatever. It's, <laughs> I don't even know. Cause like, I, I just, I say stupid things on Twitter all the time. That's just, that's what I do. I don't know why anyone follows me on Twitter. Um, but uh, yeah, if I followed all those people back, I'd be following 14,000 people. What, what am I expecting to see on my timeline at that point? Mm. So one of the things that they pitch strongly in NFT circles is the idea of community. The idea that you, a common, this is their word, not my word, a common degenerate. Uh, can well, rub I elbows am. in communities with all with it. with these celebrities, right? And that's why that's where things like Crypto Land come from, and when, why they're selling is the Board Eight Yacht Club uh, community events. The idea being that you can be around like minded people, and when you see uh, someone like uh, I guess John Cena and Paris Hilton and Crystal Hefner, um, none of which I really care to spend uh, all that much time with. Um, the idea is now you're going to actually be in IRL spaces with these people because you're in the same community. Like, and, and no offense That's... here, uh, Vice Rhino, you and I have been, you know, part of the atheist YouTuber community for about two years. I've been here for two years. You've been here for much longer, but we've never really like intersected much, have we? No, not really. So now you have this community with 200K followers and you really think that you're going to be spending meaningful time with Paris Hilton? No. Like how does this? How is this? I don't well, understand. Just, how they like if if is... she if she has two hundred thousand followers and so she has followed all those two hundred thousand people back, like there's only five hundred twenty five thousand six hundred minutes in a year. <laughs> yeah, she's not and, spending more than. And two yes, minutes I do only you. know that number because of the song. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I heard that song, I actually had to figure out what are they talking about because I, I only knew that one clip of it. Yeah, well, I I actually um so I, I'm reading. Uh, what if by Randall Monroe to my kids is their bedtime book right now. Mm. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's uh, uh, serious scientific answers to absurd hypothetical questions. So it'd be things like what would happen if you were to gather a mole of moles in one spot? So like that, that's a, that's a mole Avogadro's number 6.02 <laughs> yeah. times 10 to the 23rd. Um, in it looks like you get that many of the animal mole and it's it's this like disturbing picture of like a meat planet with like volcano volcanic <laughs> eruptions of rancid mole flesh and it's it's completely disgusting and amazing and fantastic and i love it but um literally wait this is your bedtime reading this for your is kids? our bedtime reading yeah they oh, love it wow. oh they love it it's fantastic um but uh yeah there's the um the very week that I introduced my kids to that song from Rent, I forget why, is it like something came up and like someone asked me how many minutes are in a year or whatever. And I was like, oh, I know that one. Um, so I, I sang them the song. And um, then like the next night I was reading them from What If. And uh, the, like it was uh, if you could, the question was, if your printer could print actual legitimate money, how much money would you make in a year? And would that, <laughs> would that do anything to the economy? And uh, so he had a little comic of him, like him calculating it. And he's like, okay, so that's, you can print $400 bills per sheet. You can print this many sheets per minute, or let's say one sheet per minute. And there are 525,006. And he had li little musical <laughs> notes there. And it's like, yeah, see kids, it pays to let me sing annoying songs at you. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I want in on this book. It sounds, it sounds fascinating. 
And if it's if it's palatable enough for kids, I think I might be able to understand it too. It's it's a fun book. Uh, they have it on audiobook as well. Uh, it's there's a lot of numbers though. The audiobook's a bit hard, mm. and I think it might be. Um, I think it might be uh, what's his name, the guy who played Wesley Crusher, Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton. Mm. I think it might be read by Will Wheaton. I'm not sure. Okay. So you you mentioned really quick the the uh, Board Eight Yacht Club number. Yeah. And we can go back to very, very briefly explaining why all their art looks like crap. <laughs> so what happens is when you want to sell 10,000 of something, send 10,000 unique pieces of art, it takes a long time to make 10,000 pieces of art, right? So instead, what they do is they have a base, and then they have four different things that are, have 10 different modifications, like 10 different smiles, 10 different hairstyles, 10 different sunglasses, 10 different ears. And then they use an algorithm to mix all those up to create what appear to be different images. They don't appear to be different. You get it, it's different enough that it's non fungible. <laughs> but that's what, yeah, that's he's basically saying I own Board Ape Yacht Club Ape number 5905, yeah. which is great flex. Uh, Nunya Business for 499 says, Vice, I say stupid things on Twitter. I don't know why anyone follows me on Twitter. Kind of just answered your own question there, didn't you, Vice? Maybe. Do people like to see stupid? Well, yeah, yeah, okay. You know what? I literally am on Twitter just to collect stupid things for the stream. So, yeah, people go to Twitter to see stupid things. Teach me how you do it, Senpai, because I try to pick fights and I can't find them for the life of me. And you sit here like you just exist and, and you get you get I, all sorts of. I have a, I have a sock account that I follow all the people that I don't want on my regular timeline. And okay. And uh, it's 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 jarring when I like log into my like I go to Twitter and I forget that I was in my sock account and it's like, why is my timeline such utter shit right now? Like, holy crap, these people are coming. Out. Oh, no, I'm in the wrong account. Like, I, I can't buy someone arguing with me on Twitter. I don't understand how you people are finding this. Let me in on your secrets. <sighs> I like, just we, respond I was on to the show, a, like I said, respond to I a Kevin that, Sorbo tweet. He's got a lot of fanboys that will jump in and reply to you. Put put, put alerts on for Kevin Sorbo so you, you so you can be one of the first people to respond to him. Okay, okay. I, I do that with some of the major apologists I think, until I realize that most of the responses to the major apologists online are atheists trying yeah. to say why it makes no sense. Well, yeah, no. The the major apologists don't do anything on Twitter. Like they post their thing and they bounce. Like it, it's probably right. posted from a third party app and they they don't even go on twitter to see the replies um that's why there there's some that i i won't retweet i will take screenshots because yeah i don't want to i don't want to improve their metrics or whatever retweeting gives them uh, uh yeah engagement but, metrics yeah but that actually might be a part of it like I, I think twitter it's it's a bit of a mystery how twitter determines which tweets are shown first as replies to other ones and which are not but i would be willing to bet that's uh, how many followers you have will give you a better chance of being higher up mm -hmm. so that might be one way like if i respond to someone people are more likely to see it just because i have followers which is kind of dumb uh, but also i i don't know if you notice this too but i i've noticed that um People that tend to disagree with me often get hidden behind the uh, the vulgar language flag thing. Where it's like, oh, this tweet might contain sensitive language. Oh, so, so you, so have, you to have to like, click go on out of your way to find them. Yeah, and, but like, I'll click on it, and there's no swearing, there's no insults, there's no vulgar language. It's just someone disagreeing with me, and it's it it makes it hard sometimes because like, I don't like. Um, I don't have notifications turned on for my phone because then it'd just be going off all the time and I'd hate it. Um, yeah, we should all be so lucky. Yeah, no, I. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, it's not. I don't like it, but uh, um, what, but like, also, so what, like when I'm actually in a conversation with someone who disagrees with me, sometimes it makes it hard because like. I get enough notifications that sometimes it can be hard to carry on a conversation if I don't like if I forget about it later anyway. But if they're constantly being flagged by this no uh, or by this vulgar language thing, um, then I don't get the notification for that. And they don't know that they're being flagged by this thing. So sometimes right. it's just like the conversation peters off and it might have been like sometimes it's been a good conversation, but I it peters off and I don't find it till months later. And like, oh, I wonder what happened to that. But. Whatever. Problems with Twitter is a whole nother thing. 
Yeah, you know what? I, I I'm I'm sitting here incredibly jealous of you because don't the, be, the don't time be. when I get the most notifications on Twitter is when someone like you tags me in a post. I'm I'm going to be getting notifications from this post for months. Okay, like um, Arden of Eden. Um, uh, sorry, Arden Hart posted me. Sorry, uh, linked me when uh, a long time ago when we did a co-stream playing World of Warcraft. This was like six months ago. I am still getting notifications from people who like that post. So I'm willing to bet six months from now, I'm still going to get people who liked this post that you put up on Twitter uh, saying, hey, I'm on with, with what the puck. And and that's that, that I'm probably going to get some follows just from this, just because of you. So thank you for helping me get to quadruple digits. You're you welcome. Six digit follower monster. I, I don't want them. <laughs> it's good engagement, right? It is. Well, yeah, I mean, in, in theory, it's supposed to be building the brand or whatever, but really it's just me being, uh, um, I'm just being a dick on the internet. Uh, so we're going to look Paul, at uh, Drop Acid's other tweet? Do you want, uh, well, Paul Kohler sent $2, okay. says, speaking of Twitter, check your DMs, bub. Love you. Um, Aww, I recognize... That's how I got in touch with you. I, well, I, my, my, my DMs are semi-open. So, like... Anyone can message me, but uh, it goes into a message request folder that I I have to go out of my way to check it, and I don't get notifications for messages there, so usually I ignore them. Um, I recognize this person's... Yeah, uh, yeah, that's him. Uh... You know what? For, for every, uh, for every uh, um, online atheist YouTuber out there who says oh. that my DMs are flooded, I don't have time to engage with everybody, there's someone like me, my DMs are empty, okay? So if you everybody really want to pick a fight, puck. yes, find me on Twitter at what the puck and then the number zero because it looks like a hockey puck. No. Um, anyway. Well, I... <laughs> yeah, so, uh, well, actually... If, if people really want to get in touch with me if you uh, fill out the form on my website uh, vicerano.com there's a contact me form i do read all those messages but i usually don't respond because i do get a lot and that, that would be a full-time job um <laughs> yeah anyway so yeah that the person that just told me to check my dms i'm actually going to be on creaky blinders channel on Ooh. sunday the 20th sunday the, is that the yeah sunday the 20th and so that was actually about business related stuff that I probably should have dealt with uh, back on Friday when that was originally sent to me. Sorry. Oh man, you get all the cool collabs. Yeah, Creaky's a good dude. You guys are awesome. <laughs> okay. Okay. So next, th next. Do we, do we want to look at Drop Acid's uh, second follow up here? Yeah. This is the I just realized I sold an ape and had three hundred thousand instead of buying a Lambo or a house. I immediately purchased another ape. Am I insane? Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, guess, like, again, it's a, a bot way of saying that they believe that it's still going to increase in valuation. And if they believe it, if they're willing to stake $300,000 on it, then it's good enough for you to believe it too, which again is some kind of fallacy somewhere, but I'm not good with philosophy. Yeah. Um, well, here's, here's the thing is that um, like even, even like instead of buying a Lambo or a house, there are, are like if you already have a lot of money then sure buy a lambo or a house mm -hmm. but like if you don't have a lot of money there are much smarter things you can do with your like if, if you desperately need a house it's definitely like at least use that to make a massive down payment on the house um but yeah like there's there's much smarter things you can do with that than wasting it on a fancy car or a house Although in, yeah. in this market, three, 300,000 isn't much of a house. <laughs> but I mean, this is their idea of a flex, right? And it appeals to a certain kind of people who wish they could be that rich and who want to be in a community of people who think in a similar way, who uh, have probably been screwed over by the system a couple of times and are looking for the one way that they can get an advantage to move on up. It, basically, this is their way of, of like, it, it's their version of winning the lottery. Right. And that's basically what NFT buying is right now, where they say, oh, if I follow this person who is smart enough to think that it's worth three hundred thousand dollars to continue to play the game, I should get into it now. This this is where I should spend my three hundred thousand dollars in life savings. And if it if I have to sell my house to, to do it, that's by gum. That's just what it takes to play the game. And that's wow. What a scam, because, you know, someone is, gonna, is thinking about that. Look at that. Two thousand likes. Yeah. I don't think I have 2,000 likes um, total in my entire Twitter. 
Now that said, with 2,000 likes and only 317 comments and 127 retweets, that's again that says bot activity to me. Because mm. usually with that many likes, there would be there would be more retweets or it, it, there would be more interaction with that than just likes. I think. Is this what ratioed means? I I, I don't know the no, terminology. Ratio would be like if someone were to write NFTs are great and get 600 likes and then someone reply replies to that with no N NFTs are a scam actually and they get like twice the number of likes as the original tweet that's a ratio gotcha gotcha okay okay like i said i'm new i'm i'm, I'm practically a boomer in uh twitter space so yeah look at this we haven't we've only gone through about half of the 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 the, the tweets i feel kind of bad about this i'm really slow no that's that's okay we uh we don't have to go through all of them um, I do, however, there's one thing. Um, there we go. Um, oh, where'd it go? Ah, there we go. I, is I this the just... Pemulus one? Hmm? No, no, no. Pem I'm, okay. I'm changing things up in the middle oh. of the stream. Um, no, no, no. Do your thing. You pull pull up the uh, pull up the stream so you can see it because this isn't going to be in your thing. I am watching the stream now. Ah, where'd it go? There we and go. And there's about a 15 second delay. So when you put it up, you can talk to it for 15, about it for 15 seconds. Okay, hello. Yeah. yeah, so I'd like to announce Bored Rhino NFTs. <laughs> oh no. So this is. <laughs> and are we gonna have like different monocles and different top hats and different bow ties? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we can. That's how you do it. We can do that. Uh, yeah, this is, I also have the Eric Hovind, <laughs> Eric Hovind Rhino. Oh no. Um, let's see. I, I think I own the commercial rights to this one. That's Jackson Wheat, Wheat Man. <laughs> oh. Um. Let's see. We've got we got uh, God Rhino. <laughs> this is I actually. <laughs> Yeah, so with uh, with my channel artist and I have a um, we we have a uh, an arrangement where it's like this is how much a brand new from the from scratch avatar will cost, but if you just want to like make some superficial changes to an existing one, it's cheaper. So I I have that's basically my board ape version of the right. Nice. So if so if people send me tens of thousands of dollars, I'll send you a text file saying that that belongs to you officially, but not commercially. <laughs> Oh man, no! I used to. Uh, speaking of, and I love our graphic designers because they do so much work. So we don't have to. Um, my puck logo, which is basically a puck with my old hairstyle on it. Every time I changed my hair color, my graphic designer was on it and sent me a new puck with that new hair color. And I don't always change all my uh, icons at the same. Like my my my. You can see there on my Facebook and the one on Twitter and the one I use on Twitch are actually three different hair colors. So it's like, I, I guess I got into this early, but here's the other big pitch with NFTs. They're supposed to benefit artists more. And I suppose that if they put in the structure that they are supposed to, I, I can I can see a model where they could get some benefit from it. But as it exists, we already have a pretty great way of compensating our digital artists. Yeah, don't we? Just, just pay them. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and they're really happy with it. Yeah. It's, it's what they want, and it's Cash what they ask works. for. Um, so my stream health is apparently... Uh, uh oh uh, Like, there, there might be buffering going on. YouTube's telling me that they're not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Um, I'm using, like, 1% of my bandwidth, so I don't know why that would be. I, there's plenty of overhead. Um, so I'm sorry? No, 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 no. We're, that's cool. But uh, it seems to still be going... Okay. But like the quality might be taking a hit right now, so sorry, you might see buffering. Um, I'll try and figure it out, but I'm probably. I'll, I'll blame my to... internet. I have internet problems. No, a go go. It's, it's, it's time you. for a new PC. Okay, so this one is a little hard to read, so I'm gonna have to make it bigger. Oh. There we go. This is uh, Kelamite. Recency ah. bias: a short thread on uh, psychology and investing. Recency bias is a common term in psychology. It's a state whereby the brain processes information according to things that have happened before and likely links that to, uh, to that it might happen again. That's a really weird way to say that. Recency bias is your brain gives more importance to things that have happened recently than things that have happened further in the past. So like if there's some, like if, 
you know, if, if every time you flip a coin or like you flip a coin, keep track of it, uh, like you flip a coin f five times in a row and it comes up heads each time and then you wait six months and flip it five times in a row and it comes up tails each time, you're going to give more importance to the one that just happened than the one that happened before, even though they both have the exact same likelihood. That's recency right. bias. Uh, and he says, uh, how does this apply to investing? Say you bought stock slash coin because it had done 50%. Your brain automatically expects it to do another 50% or more. The coin then starts to decline. You think the market is going against you. It's not. Same thing with bear markets. That's actually half decent advice if we just stop there. I don't, I haven't actually read the rest <laughs> of it, but it's like, yeah, it's um, with traditional investments like mutual funds and stuff like that fluctuations happen my stocks are all down right now and it sucks and i like i there is an urge to be like oh i gotta pull out before i lose more but the stock market does typically go up typically uh mutual funds are picked strategically to do that but like historically they go up and right stuff but like right now there's instability in the world causing like they were they were down before the war happened but um Whatever. There's, I'm not. I'm not getting into all. Like, this isn't a finance stream for traditional <laughs> stuff. It's it's a really complicated topic. But um, generally, it's good advice to like just put your money in and leave it. Right. As the idea is that you're playing the long game here. Yeah. You're you're putting it away to not look at for a very long time, so that small fluctuations in the market won't be affecting you as much. Yeah. Which is fine for long term investments. Not so great if you're trying to make this an everyday use currency. No. So, yeah. And, yeah. and and again, this is the way that they're thinking right now. Crypto is down and it looks like it's there's a small upswing, but right now it's it's down from what it used to be just a few months ago. So there's a little bit of a panic going on in the community where you have people like this saying, hey, guys, it's just a small dip. It's going to go back up. So stick with it. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, the last last one is the market does a yeah. minus 50 percent. No, the market doesn't do, drop 50 percent. Like I'm down right now. It's probably down like maybe two percent <laughs> uh, but your brain automatically thinks you'll continue losing money if, uh you cut off i think they're saying if your brain thinks that and then you cut off and next thing you cut off you're like okay what the f this person needs to i hope i hope english is not this person's first language because yeah although realistically i i the people who english is not their first language usually type better than people who it is <laughs> Um, now, what's the cure to recency bias? It all boils down to your knowledge about the stock slash token you're buying. Not with mutual funds. <laughs> I like mutual funds are like the 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 things that I have in funds like that are basically set up so it's like, no, nope, I don't want to know anything about it. Just do your thing, and hopefully right. it'll go up. <laughs> Again. No, and, and that's that's another big thing. You know, they have a very different use of the term passive income than like the rest of us. <laughs> like their idea of passive income is is, you know, I guess I would have thought of it more as as uh, it's not passive because you don't just leave it alone and, and come back 40 years later to a massive increase. It's very active. Right. You have to buy low and sell high and and yeah. keep an eye. Like you said, uh, know about the token and the stock that you're buying. That's not passive. No, that's not passive. That's that's oh, you got to keep your eye on things and do your, a lot of research. I've looked into day trading. Is it like just curious? Is like okay, well, what's what's this day trading thing? But it's like, oh no, that's like a full time job. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of. You know, I, I guess some people can afford to just spend like an hour on each trade, shuffling stuff around. But uh, yeah, no. if you really want to make it a primary source of income, there's a tremendous amount of work that goes into it. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, yeah, I, I could, I do own a couple stocks that I actually know what the stocks are, and they're things like banks. I own stocks right. in banks, and they pay, <laughs> and th this is passive income because they pay a dividend of approximately one percent every quarter. Right, right. So it's that, like that yeah, is that the, is a good example. The of passive overall income. value is in, down, yeah. but I'm still making actual money out of it. Right. But they're they're hijacking that buzzword to make it seem like a more legitimate financial investment. So. Yeah. And oh, then Kel might wrap, wraps it up with with a nice little summary. Uh, let's oh, where'd it go? Come on. Shrink, shrink, shrink. Oh, that's the summary tweet. OK, there we go. Uh, if you've invested time and know about the token slash coin you're buying, you'd beat the recency bias to the core. 
Thank you, smiley face. Wag me. Wag me just sounds dirty. <laughs> Wag me. Which, like, ag again, I like, I interpret this as someone who's deeply invested into crypto already and who just needs to continue to convince other people that the money they've put into it still has value. Just wag me sounds like something you'd ask for out of brothel. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll take the wag me today, please. Oh, wow. I'll, I'll check my OnlyFans subscriptions and see if any of them <laughs> offer a wag me. <laughs> oh, goodness. Ooh, Don Chan, thank you. Yeah, Don Chan says, what happens when world governments decide that blockchain is unsustainable and shuts off the servers? It may sound like a r big hypothetical, but it sounds like a real possibility. No, it's happened in China. I think, was it China that made uh, certain Yeah, there are some, some uh, world governments that are allowing, uh, that are, are starting to regulate crypto for themselves. Yeah. And well, having, I, I think, starting to release their own I think a bunch, bunch of NFTs got seized by the British government. I'd have to Recently. look more. I'm, I'm into the science side, not the social side. So I'm going to have to look up in this a little bit more. But yeah, and, and now um, the announcement from the Biden administration was that uh, uh, there, there's going to be a commission on studying the impact of cryptocurrencies. So um, yeah, so, I actually uh, sorry, want to know sorry what this to interrupt. Is I, I just found it. Her Majesty's Revenue and uh, Customs seized three NFTs after investigating an attempt to defraud the public coffers of 1.4 million pounds. Around 5,000 pounds worth of other crypto crypto assets were also seized. So, like that's that's one of the main selling points of crypto is that the governments aren't regulating it. Therefore, you can do whatever the fuck you want, and you can avoid paying taxes and shit. Nope. Yeah, no. Uh, it turns out that exchanging cryptocurrency. If you gain a, uh, uh, if there's a gain from it, that's taxable. So, yeah, no, well, and so. and they're like, even if there were no regulations, the fact, like, you think the government's going to let it slide forever? No, no, <laughs> not with like, this much money just, involved. Just because there, yeah. just because there were not in the past, does not mean that there are not going to be in the future. Yeah, they're on it. They're on it. Like I said, I'm super curious as to what the executive order turns up in six months. So we'll see what happens then. YouTube says my connection's better now. Yay. Okay, so this is, uh, there will only be five industries. Automation over overseer, that's manual labor 2.0. Productivity mm. SaaS for SaaS firms. I don't know what a SaaS firm is. Uh, the SaaS software is uh, software that you don't actually have on your computer. It's basically what we would think of as cloud software okay, right now. Yeah, yeah. So you connect to the internet, use the software like web off the internet, but don't actually things. own it. Okay. Um, ML slash AI at M... Star T A or S F Series B. St what the? F I don't know what the. Fuck I have. I don't know what that means. Okay, sure. So. NFT community manager. <laughs> Yo. Alcoholic all cold caller sales chat. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, that's ridiculous. So so here's here's like this is the nefarious part of NFTs. Okay, is the community behind it, and it is especially fascinating if you apply the bite model to NFT Discord. OK, because you have here people who will kick you out if you seem like you're critical or just skeptical of a project. Like, yeah. I don't know if this is going to work out instant. You don't belong in this group. Yeah. So this okay? person like so someone responded to this person saying community manager is a bull market job. Sales chads, on the other hand, uh -huh. and then this person essentially dunks on them. And you're like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. You don't have a one in 10,000 profile picture. So I'm ignoring your opinion because you don't get wag me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get the wag me culture. Uh-huh. And you're in the least ruining everything my gated Discord and Twitter spaces spam is trying to accomplish here. See, they're, they, they, they kick you out if you don't, if you're even slightly critical of it. They control the information that you're trying to, to give. Like, they want a, only a certain type of information getting into it, right? They will start to, like we saw from the last post, change your psychology. That's the T and bite, right? Yeah. And the one thing that I haven't really seen yet, although I'm sure it's there, I just haven't found it, is the emotional control. But that's still three out of four I check mean, marks. That's three uh, out of four. Well, emotional, uh, I've, I've, it's been a while since I've read over the thing, but would emotional control not be that thing where they, they try and get people all hyped up for, uh, for like the NFT, like, oh, this is awesome, yeah. this is awesome, this is great, everything's great, don't be negative about it, being negative is unacceptable. Like you got it, you win. We, we we win four out of four. NFT culture score a four out of four on the bite model. Yeah, sure. It is. I mean, right there. Well, I mean, there's there's more to it than just the general headlines. Yeah, but, no, so, no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, it's but just the idea. It's that, definitely I mean, got some aspects. Yeah, 
and that's what I that's that's what that's what gets to me is that the the technology is interesting and has some potential for the future. But these insular communities are being built up through uh, misinformation and possibly even deliberate obfuscation of information so that the people who are in early benefit at the expense of the people who they try to bring in late, which is like exactly MLM energy yeah. or the very worst, very scammy. OK, so. so I think there's yeah. two more left. OK. And then we're going to call it quits because it's getting close to my go time. Oh, we get to leave the audience with homework. OK, good. <laughs> so this is, whoa, Wag Me Games Co. Scott Herman. That's better than anything from Pornhub. Wait, that, OK, so that's... What does his searches look like? I don't know. I mean, like, if you're into tight body demon men things, like, watch watch Legend with Tim Curry. You'll, you'll like that. Uh, <laughs> But uh, and I should know LFG. What's LFG? Looking for group. Looking for group. Easiest uh, thousand times ever in crypto. If you don't buy now, you will regret it. Right. Um, and this is a uh, sneak peek at the Wag Me game trailer dropping Monday. All I can say is, holy shit. I snagged a screen screenshot. Don't tell Wag Me. Yeah. And, and so this is, again, another way that they build hype. For those of you who are familiar with, with, with video game pitches, um, usually you'll start to get a pretty good idea of what the game is going to be like long before the release. They'll, at the very least, have some gameplay footage. Uh, you'll know how yeah. the game is played. You'll know how you're supposed to generate currency and income from it. Um, but no, because if you go to this site, you see vague crap like this. OK, where it has like really, really vague stuff like it promises apparently 3D MMORPG. Uh, and I'm going to guess that's supposed to be PVP, not MVP um, in initial. And of course, it gives something really vague initial planning stages. So, you know, you got to believe in yeah. the community. But and then, if you just give them enough money, they'll be able to make your dream come true. But then it's like the other things they're promising are like here's some nfts to drop the nfts right. are going to drop before anything else happens of course because those are the ones that get them the money that's basically the crowdfunding yeah um, yeah well yeah but that's if they were using it for crowdfunding <laughs> then they should drop the nfts months or years before the game is actually expected right. to come out um so that like this just red flags all over the place um but then their official cinematic trailer is set for release and then a PvP tower defense game set for release at the end of March. <laughs> tower defense. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're not familiar, that's that game where you like you plunk a tower down and little things like try and get through a maze to get to your castle or whatever. And your tower shoots the little things and you upgrade your tower and you plunk down other towers and stuff. And it's like it can be a fun little time waster game that you can play while you're on the toilet. Yeah, not something I would want to <laughs> drop ten thousand dollars to buy an NFT to get into it. And and yeah, and that's the the other thing though. They make a relatively simple game that doesn't take a lot of processing power because the true use of a lot of these games. And I don't know. I'm not saying that about this one because I don't know for sure. But a lot of these games are a very simple game to disguise the fact that what you're actually downloading is Bitcoin or not necessarily yeah. Bitcoin, but uh, crypto mining software. Yeah. It'll use your computer to mine crypto for the person who made the game. So they, so they right. get you to buy an NFT and then they get you to buy the game and then they use your resources to mine crypto for themselves. So it's like, yeah, but that's half the fun of decentralization because now you get to devote your computing power to, uh, to, to the blockchain. So. I think that's a, a horrible, horrible model. Yeah. Um, Jassa so. says NFTs plus tower defense. That sounds awful. No, and that's why like idle games are, are really popular for this. Well, uh, because again, a very simple game, but your computer always has to be on. So it, it gets to continue mining for them. Yeah. So I, um, I don't know if this was actually the case, but uh, I, I remember a while ago, I only game stream I've done on my main channel uh, it was because it was that flat earth simulator thing and it was just so much fun to just go through it but i was looking i like i had just got a graphics card when i did that so i was like all excited to see like what you what kind of resources is this game going to use so i had the overlay up so i could see what it was using and this simple simple just basic simulation thing was running on an RTX 3080 one of the uh, at the time it was the top like best graphics card you can get before you get into the ones that cost $5000 before the scalpers get them um and but uh yeah and so on this top of the line graphics card this simple basic game was using 99% of the resources 
<laughs> and it was just like, okay, well, what is this? Is it mining crypto in the background? I don't know for sure, but I'm uninstalling this bad boy as soon as the stream's oh, over. <laughs> I got a refund no. for that, just in case. Any, any, in case anybody was worried that my five dollars went to actually support something bad, I did get a refund. <laughs> no, and and it's I I I don't know. There, there's so much nefarious stuff on here, and it has that same energy as as really bad apologists, where if they really had a good case to make, they wouldn't have to rely on so many uh, bad arguments and fallacies yeah. to get their point across. Yeah, so absolutely. That's how I look at it. But uh, anyway, it's been a slice. Thank wow. you so much for joining me. I I I did a show on the Vice Rhino channel. You did. I, I'm, I'm going to be. This is cooler than the time I, I watched a live hockey game over at, at the Joe Louis Arena. So this has been I'm, this has been a life changing event for me, and I appreciate it very I'm, much. I'm just a dude. <laughs> you, are, I, I love I, I love getting to spend some time with you after watching you all these years. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Oh, thank you for joining me. It's been fun. And uh, yeah, so that's it for the stream. It's uh, getting close to emergency cuddles time. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, let me just check and make sure I don't have any super chats that I forgot to read, which I did I did a couple weeks ago. There was one at the end and I, I felt so bad afterwards. Oh no. Yeah. We um, love you all. Everybody who just even just, if you watch us, if you, if you, if you engage with us, we love all the engagement. Yes, yes we Thank do. Thank you so much for everyone. Yeah. All right. So thanks for joining me and we'll see y'all next week and Friday's video and stuff and whatever promotion barterman and thingy. I'm bad at this. <laughs> I Bye. don't have an outro either. We're good. Bye. <laughs>